Deacon Jones famously said, you can never be cut from, traded from, or even quit this team. In reference to the band of brothers enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the quote was so apropos that it now resides on the side of the building. It was a day 55 years in the making. Ken Riley began his career with the Cincinnati Bengals in 1969. For the next 15 years, he would control the defensive corner position in stellar fashion. In the words of famed ESPN commentator Chris Berman, He was soft-spoken and a coach on the field for his teammates, for his fellow defenders, and his fellow receivers. So, in a three-year span from 1974 to 1976, Ken picked off 20 passes, nine in 1976 alone, but often overlooked from the outside. He somehow, even that year, didn't make the Pro Bowl, which is frankly ridiculous. I was always taught humility, let your work speak for you. And I, I went unnoticed. There were some times, I mean, I led the conference three times in interception. My last two as a, as a player, retired, eight interceptions. I was 36 years old. Still started all games, you know, but it went unnoticed. But all those things go unnoticed. And I was, until people say, who is this guy, Ken Ryder? Why has nobody, you know, said, uh, why is he in the Hall of Fame? And, and, and I get more of that from other people after they see my stats because they just didn't know because I was, and in Cincinnati, we were not publicized. I mean, we, we were not glorified, so to speak. Paul Brown's philosophy is you go out and you, that's what I'm paying you to do. And uh, there are a lot of guys that uh, had great careers there but went unnoticed, and I was one of those guys. That would define not only Ken Riley's career, but his wait to be enshrined as one of the best. When he retired in 1983 with wife Barbara, his kids, and legendary coach Jake Gaither at his side, he was fourth on the all-time interceptions list and owned virtually every record for a defensive back in the Bengals organization. 2023 would be different. After the long wait, the Riley family finally got the call it was waiting on. Unfortunately, Ken would pass in 2020 and not get the opportunity to enjoy his achievement. Still, it was a grand celebration for the ages. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is different. The celebration is one of the most unique in any sport. The current members welcome the new members in a manner unlike any other. But the latest HBCU entry into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, though posthumously, was welcomed with the same open arms. Riley's family, led by his son, Ken Riley II, and Riley's wife of 51 years, Barbara, filled the gap nicely and represented well for his legacy. The Friday night gold coat ceremony is where current players don their gold Haker jackets. For the players with posthumous honors, their jackets are presented to their families in a neatly crafted shadow box. Saturday morning, it was time for the traditional Hall of Fame parade through downtown Canton. The FAMU contingent showed out big for Riley. Several former football players, mostly from the Riley era, accompanied a float commissioned by FAMU VP AD Tiffany Dawn Sykes. FAMU's Venom and Mrs. Venom and float marshals Greg Coleman and Art Hightower were all present. FAMU's Venom and Mrs. Venom and float marshals Greg Coleman and Art Hightower were all present. Former FAMU players Tony Ezell, Wally Williams, Nate Thurman, Ian Connor, Doug Austin, and Tracy Weldon repped the orange and green in a three-mile parade through the streets of Canton.
Not to be left out of the proceedings, FAMU alum and Hollywood producer Will Packer and his wife Heather took part in the parade in a throwback drop-top convertible as well. Shortly after the parade, it was time to rush to the grand finale, the actual enshrinement ceremony. After an impassioned warm-up from Mrs. Riley, they unveiled the bust of the Rattler. It was his spitting image, set in bronze to last forever. It was then time for Ken Riley II to bring it home with his acceptance speech, and he knocked it out of the park. I told him I wouldn't visit Caden until he was enshrined. And now I'm here today, and I believe that he and my grandmother are smiling down on us. My father played with the Bengals for 15 years, from 1969 until 83. And even though he never played defense until they drafted him, my father, Ken Riley, ended his career as the number four all-time interception leader. Today, 40 years later, he's still tied for number five. My father was a true professional from start to finish. As a kid, I didn't know what I was watching when he was training on those long, hot summer Florida days. Sometimes we would ride along in the car as he ran on those old country roads. But as a man, I understand that I was seeing the dedication, commitment, and hard work that it takes to be great. The good ones make it look easy. Most people think, they're just born with talent, which is true. But what they don't see is the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into making that talent shine. Dad has just been inducted today, but his whole life, he was a Hall of Famer on and off the field. My father was a God-fearing man, always told us to keep God first. He cared about his family, his community, and kids. He was a family man to the bone, and being away from us for months at a time while he played was a giant sacrifice. And then, when his playing days were over, he sacrificed again, this time putting his career second to his family. He had a budding NFL coaching career, but took a job at his alma mater, Florida a &M University. He did that because he loved the school but also because he thought we would be happier back in Florida that we weren't at Green Bay, especially my sisters. Uh, once we was at FAMU, he got calls from SMU, Georgia Tech, and others, but he didn't leave. It was important to him that we all finish our education. And thanks to his and my mother's guidance, we all graduated with college degrees. My sister, Kim, she's in the audience, uh, she has a doctorate in pharmacy, and she's been a pharmacist for over 20 years. My younger sister, Kanisha, she has a bachelor's in physical therapy and a master's in public health. Cameron, Chance Connor, Ken K.J. Riley III, Caden Riley, his four grandsons, I hope that we're making them proud. I want to say a couple of words to my mother, one of the strongest women I know. My dad always used to say that Marion Barbara Candy Moore was the best decision he ever made, and he was right. When he was doing the season, she was mom and dad. She was the rock of our family. And even though she was working as a teacher, she always made sure that we had everything we needed. Mom, I know it's hard to see the fruition of everything you and dad work for, and him not being here with us today. But all the love that everyone is here is feeling for him, that's for you too. Because of the way you supported him and helped him stay strong for the 51 plus years that you two were married. Finally, I wanna say thank you to everyone who's here today to share with this great day with us. Many thanks to the Hall President John Porter, all the volunteers, all the staff, and all of the voters who made this happen. To the fans, all of the Hootay Nation, want to give a special shout out, Hootay, to Bingo Jim and his wife. Uh, he's been a great supporter over the past few, few years. 
To my dad's former teammates, a lot of who are here today, Ken Anderson, Isaac Curtis, Lewis Breeden, Reggie Williams, Leap and Lamar Parrish, and some of his peers, Mel Blunt, James Lofton, Coach Forrest Gregg. This guy has always been a support. I also want to thank the Bengals organization, Coach Paul Brown, who gave him that start, Mike Brown, and all of the Brown family, and to everyone who loved the game the way that he did. It's been a long time coming, Dad, but you made it. <laughs>